Chemistry lecture number 91, naming acids. A binary acid is made of only two elements. For example, HCl is a binary acid made of only hydrogen and chlorine. Generally, binary acids are named using the following steps. Use the prefix hydro. Use the part of the name of the second element in the formula. Add the suffix ic. Add the word acid. For example, HCl would be named as follows. You'd start with the word hydro. The second part, you would add chlor, since the second element is chlorine. You add the suffix ic, and then you tack on the word acid. Thus, HCl would be hydrochloric acid. You should be able to write the names of the following binary acids given the formula, or write the formula given the name. Memorize the names and formulas of the following acids. <clears throat> HF, which contains fluorine, is going to be hydrofluoric acid. HCl, which contains chlorine, is going to be hydrochloric acid. HBr, which contains bromine, is going to be hydrobromic acid. And then HI, which contains iodine, is going to be hydroiodic acid. So all binary acids start with the word hydro, part of the name of the second uh, element, ic acid, hydroiodic acid, hydrobromic acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrofluoric acid. Ternary acids contain three elements. For example, HNO3 is an acid that contains hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. If a ternary acid contains a polyatomic ion whose name ends in eight, use the following steps to name the acid. Uh, write part of the name of the polyatomic ion, add the suffix ic, and then add the word acid. For example, HNO3 contains the polyatomic ion nitrate, NO3. It would be named as follows. Part of the name of the acid is nitrate, so it's nitric acid. So the name of HNO3 would be nitric acid. You should be able to write the names of the, <coughs> excuse me, of the following uh, ternary acids given the formula, or write the formula given the name. Memorize the names and formulas of the following acids. H2CO3, which contains carbonate, is going to be called carbonic acid. HNO3, which contains nitrate, NO3, is going to be nitric acid. H2SO4, which contains sulfate, SO4, is going to be called sulfuric acid. H3PO4, which contains phosphate, PO4, that's going to be called phosphoric acid. Um, HClO3, which contains chlorate, ClO3, that's going to be called chloric acid. And then HC2H3O2, which contains acetate, C2H3O2, that's going to be called acetic acid. And there's another way of writing acetic acid. You can write this formula or you can write this formula. So notice that the formula for acetic acid can be written as HC2H3O2 or CH3COOH. And the latter formula right here gives more information about the structure of acetic acid. The following pictures show the Lewis structure of acetic acid and its dissociation into acetate and hydrogen ion. Okay, so here is acetic acid. CH3 is this part right here. See, carbon with three hydrogens attached. CH3, COOH. All right, so that's why we write it as CH3, COOH sometime. And then when this dissociates, this hydrogen here uh, gets lopped off, so to speak. So this hydrogen here is this one. And when the hydrogen leaves, it leaves behind an electron, leaving behind acetate with a negative one charge. And notice, uh, you might want to ask, well, how come this hydrogen dissociates? Why not this one, this one, or this one? Well, the hydrogen is more likely to dissociate if it's attached to an oxygen. And in particular, it's more likely to dissociate if it's attached to an oxygen of a carboxyl group. See, this whole part right here, this is called the carboxyl group. All right? And this one is more likely to fall off. All right? So let me show you the words, just repeating the idea I just mentioned. 
So notice that the hydrogen ion was previously attached to an oxygen atom. Hydrogen is more likely to dissociate from a molecule if it's attached to an oxygen atom. In particular, the hydrogen is more likely to dissociate if it's part of a carboxyl group. The carboxyl group is shown as COOH in the formula CH3COOH. So COOH right here is this, COOH. That's the carboxyl group. Okay. And there's a carboxyl group right there. The dissociation of acetic acid can be represented as CH3COH breaking apart into CH3CO negative plus H plus, and this is the acetate, or you could write it as HC2H3O2 dissociates into H plus and C2H3O2 negative. So here's another way of writing acetate, and here's another way of writing the acetate polyatomic ion. You just have to be aware of both ways because different chemistry books show acetic acid as this, and sometimes they show it as this. You just have to know both. Now there are other ternary acids that contain polyatomic ions whose names end with ite. And these polyatomic ions contain one less oxygen atom than the polyatomic ions whose names end in eight. For example, nitrate has the formula NO3 negative, but nitrite has the formula NO2 negative. So if it has one less oxygen, NO2, compared to NO3, it's called ite instead of eight. So here are the names and formulas of some polyatomic ions that end in ite instead of eight. So phosphate is PO4 with a negative three charge, but PO3 with a negative three charge is called phosphite. Uh, nitrate, we saw that. Nitrate is NO3, but nitrite is NO2, right, one less oxygen. Likewise, sulfate is SO4, but sulfite is SO3, one less oxygen compared to SO4. And then finally, uh, chlorate is ClO3, but chlorite is ClO2 with one less oxygen. Ternary acids that contain polyatomic ions whose names end with ite are named in a similar fashion to those whose names end in ate. Uh, you add OUS, us, to the end instead of ick. For example, H2SO4 is, S for example, H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. But H2SO3 is called sulfurous acid, okay? One less oxygen from four to three. The suffix changes from ick to us. So memorize the names and formulas of the following ternary acids which contain polyatomic ions whose names end in ite. I should mention that these names are not hard to memorize if you have the formulas of the acids that end in ick. Uh, all you do is just subtract one oxygen and then it ends in us. Okay. HNO2 is nitrous acid. If there were three, it would be nitric acid. H2SO3 is sulfur uh, sulfurous acid. If it was H2SO4, it would be sulfuric acid. And then H3PO3 is phosphorus acid. H3PO4 would be phosphoric acid. And then HClO2 is chlorous acid. And uh, if it was HClO3, it would be chloric acid. So if you have all the, if you have nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and phosphoric acid, and chloric acid memorized, it's not that big a leap to have nitrous acid, sulfurous, phosphorous acid, and chlorous acid memorized. These are just the same as the other acids, only with one less oxygen, and it ends with us instead of ick. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture number 91, Naming Acids.